All right, part two, you guys asked for it. Daily workflow. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is first shut my closet because it's disgusting in there and I gotta <laughs> look like I'm more figured out than that. Uh, I gave you guys an office tour. You can check out my last video for that. And I figured I would be going way too long if I went into my daily workflow as well. So I figured I'd make that a whole separate video. And I just wanna start with, uh, you know, how to have a clear vision of exactly where you're going. Because the whole idea of a workflow to me is knowing where you want to be by when, having a clear vision of where you want to be, how much money you want to make by then, where you want your company to be, what you want to be selling by then. And the core idea is when you make a decision, you also make an incision. When you decide to do something, you cut off all other options and you commit to that one direction. And if you don't commit to one direction, she's smiling behind the camera. One direction. <laughs> if you don't commit to one direction, and you're not a one direction stan, then this all falls apart, okay? So the whole idea is that you know exactly where you're going so that you can reverse engineer each day. Um, and I kind of, for some of you, you know, uh, some of you didn't watch the My Story video where I talk about how I went from zero to three or $5,000 a day online. Uh, I kind of broke down my entire story, how I started, what services I used to sell, the story of you know kind of what threw me into entrepreneurship and in that video I showed you guys a, a screenshot which I'm actually gonna pull back up uh, and it ended up in the trash on accident so I'm gonna bring it out of the trash I've got a few versions of it but I would encourage you to write up and maybe maybe you can just like come to my screen here and just show this this is like just a full breakdown of exactly how I want to achieve two and a half million in revenue this year so you have, you know, only a few areas, and you can come back to me actually real quick. Okay. <laughs> you can, so you got a few areas, marketing, sales, delivery, finances, and the numbers that matter. So I'm starting with the big picture. This year, like I said, I want to do two and a half million in revenue. And I want to do that selling our coaching and consulting programs, which range anywhere from $5,000 all the way up to $36,000 at the high end. So we've got a few different offers, but the primary earner is our main flagship program, the Consulting Blueprint. And then uh, we woke people up into our mastermind as they start to succeed more. And we can, that way we can help them build their teams, build better processes, everything like that. Like I've got a team of seven to 10 people, depending on how you define a team member. And uh, you know, the business pretty much runs itself. And my only job is just to be the face as well as to kind of be the head visionary, have this clear idea of exactly where we're going, hold the team accountable, hold myself accountable and hold our clients accountable to getting great results and making sure that they're doing so. So, for those of you who don't have a business currently, you don't have that existing momentum that you can then channel into an end, like what I have here with two and a half million in revenue. I just wanna encourage you to decide vaguely where you want to be at the end of the next fiscal year. You know, right now as I'm recording this, it's February 17th. And so I don't know why I checked my watch, there's no date on this. <laughs> I just thought I would look cool checking my fancy watch. Um, so a year from now, it'll be, you know, 2023. February 17th again. And at that point, I'll also be married. Lily will have moved in with me. And a lot's gonna change between now and then, right? So my, the whole idea is that I have a blocked off seven to nine hour window every day that I can chip away at this block. Um, and so what I encourage our clients to do, and honestly, the, the first thing we do when you join the Consulting Blueprint program is we have you set aside all the noise that's going on in your life, every piece of maybe relationship drama or uh, personal issues or bad habits or whatever, you set aside a whole weekend. And we actually have you, we, we give you instructions on how to do this, but I'll give you some of the high level here. You take some time to decide where you want to be. And you don't want to decide who you're positively affecting by getting there and who you're negatively affecting by not getting there. So the reason I want to do two and a half million in revenue, I mean, there's a few reasons. The first reason is, you know, it's just an extremely personal journey of growing my business and proving to myself that I can do it over and over again. Uh, you know, my first year in business, I did about $40,000. The next year, I did about 150. The year after that, I did about 500. This past year, we did about 1.3 or 1.4 million, arguably 1.5. It's kind of a bit of a range. We just, you know, the books haven't been fully settled yet. Uh, and that's on my accountant to do that. Uh, and this year, I'd like to do about, like I said, 2.5. And so just that steady feeling of growth and at least adding you know 80 to 120 percent to the business every year is, is my current goal until we're at that five to seven million a year mark because i f i just have this sense for some reason that the five million a year mark is where i can begin to not coast but i can begin to kind of stay there for you know five to seven eight years and really let my reputation do the work and i look up to people like seth godin or these marketing legends like dan kennedy russell brunson these people who have 
built massive empires in the marketing space because they've really made not just a career out of it, but a lifestyle and a way of thinking and a vision of the world out of it. So my goal is that in my 40s, 50s, and 60s, the reputation I'm building in my 20s, selling a ton of services, delivering work to a lot of people, and really ingraining myself in this marketplace ends up working for me in the future. So I don't really desire to go much further than five or six million a year. Maybe we will. Maybe I'll see an opportunity to get to an eight-figure company in my 20s. But I digress. So in order to get to that goal at the end of 50, 60 years old, having a legacy, having a reputation, you know, Seth Godin's net worth is like 50 million-ish, something like that. And I'd like to be about there in you know, my 50s and 60s as well. I think that's a cool mark. And so because of that, this is what I have to do this year. So I have the end in mind. I've got this year's vision in mind. And so I've got a very clear vision of where I'm going. And a lot of people, they have a hard time deciding where they want to go again, because you're afraid of cutting off the other options. You know, I could go, like I've complained to Lily before when I'm stressed, I'm like, I could just go back to being a Taekwondo instructor. Like, I almost got my black belt. I could just go do that. Or I love guitar. Maybe I could just become a musician. Or, you know, I love photography. Maybe I could just do photography. Or, you know, you're always going to have these, like, dreams of other things you can do. But not to get too philosophical, I believe, especially as a man, if, if you're a man watching this, your job is to just commit to one specific direction. And if you're a woman, you know, that can apply to you as well. But my heart goes out to specifically the men in my audience in that, we live in such a passive culture and you, your job really is to decide this is where I'm going and I'm committing to that direction. So anyway, that whole philosophical rant aside, first action item is knowing exactly where you're going. So I have two and a half million in revenue. I have the numbers broken down. So each marketing channel that we have, YouTube, cold outreach, paid advertising, as well as uh, what we call the Facebook flywheel. And this is what we teach our clients to use Facebook groups as well as their own Facebook group to be prospecting clients after this is how we get a lot of our clients to even that million a year mark. So for the next six months, we're going to be running all four of these channels. After the end of that six months, we're going to look at which one is giving us the most yield for the least money and attention in return, and then just triple down on those two channels. So me and the team are all in agreement that we're going to be running all these channels full, uh, you know, all cylinders running until we decide exactly which channel is the one we want to double down on. So we're testing new ads all the time, testing new YouTube content, as you can tell, uh, testing you know new Facebook groups, new posts, new ways of approaching that. We also have a cold outreach team of about four people who work in my company right now that are completely performance-based that are literally sending messages directly to who we believe is our preferred market. Um, we've got a software that identifies those opportunities, uh, and my head appointment set is actually training all of those people. So the goal is nine quality consults every single day, and it's assuming 70% show up rate, that's approximately you know sixty nine hundred dollars a day, so that's kind of the numbers, and that lands us at about nice. That lands us at about two and a half million in revenue for the year. Um, sales team, as well as myself, selling the mastermind, uh, at least a twenty five to thirty percent closing rate on calls, uh, as well as following up and keeping relationships active with at least fifteen prospects at any given time. So you can see I've really written out a pretty cohesive and concise plan, and whenever I get off track, and whenever I find myself not making the sort of money I want to make or making the progress that I want to make. It's because I've forgotten what I wrote down. And that's, it's really that simple. Um, so that's the first thing is know exactly where you are going. I, what? I was going to say you look like the guy from Atlantis. Comment down below if I look like the guy from Atlantis. <laughs> Robert put a picture of the guy from Atlantis right here. Compare. <laughs> like that? Is that what you want me to do? Never mind. Okay. All right. Anyway. So, now, because um, I think people ask about the routine, and the problem with a routine is it's just a routine. If it's not getting you anywhere, why have a routine? Honestly, like it doesn't make it. If you don't have, if you don't know where you're going, why optimize your days? Like it, I feel like the, a lot of the self-help industry and good habits and all this, like you know, a lot of the self-love stuff. It's all about just feeling good at the end of the day, and I agree with that to some extent. But you really want to have a clear point A. So this is like how much money you have in the bank. This is you know the feeling of impact that you have currently. This is the feeling of peace that you have when you lay your head at your pillow at night. You can measure this in your own way. You know I would add my faith to this as well and how closely I feel like I'm walking with God in that season. You kind of got point B, which is again how much money, how much impact, how much peace, and kind of where my faith is at. So in between point A, which is where we are currently, point B, which you know I mapped out everything, every facet of my business, every facet of my work that is needed in order to get there, and I have my eyes on the key numbers, the key metrics that matter, which I'll read off to you. Those are primarily the cost per call by YouTube views, ad spend, messages sent, as well as posts made. So if we can keep track 
of what it costs to get a single console, then all we have to do is reverse engineer how many consoles we need based on our closing rate. Bada bing, bada boom. You can, you, you, you see where I'm going. It's, it's a, just a simple <laughs> method. And so the whole idea with a routine, in my opinion, because people are going to ask, they're going to say, okay, Trey, I get it. You got to know where you're going, whatever. That's fancy stuff. But what's your actual routine? My routine is pretty simple. It's seven to nine hours a day, every single day of focused work. And when I say focused work, what I mean is I survey everything that's going on on this list. And throughout the day, I'm keeping my eyes on all the little moving pieces. Is my sales team closing rate up to speed? Are we getting the amount of consoles that I want in the calendar? Am I putting out the amount of content that will allow us to get those, that many sales consoles? Is our product up to speed? Are our clients happy enough for me to justify continuing to sell our services at the rate that we're selling them at? And so in this seven to nine hours, all I'm really doing is work that relates to this. I know it sounds quite simple, but um, like probably five or six hours of it is already planned out the night before. So at the end of my seven to nine hour work day, I plan the next day, not before I'm going to bed, because if I plan it before I'm going to bed, then I won't be really in line with what needs to happen in that moment. So today on my notepad right here, I know exactly what I'm doing. This YouTube video is a part of the plan. Uh, and then after that, I've got my team call coming up and then I've got a check-in call with one of our mastermind clients. Um, and then I have um, recording some new ads for our funnel, which again, lines up with the plan. And then I'm meeting with the new cold outreach team, which again, aligns with the plan. So everything goes to plan. And, and I have something that I call PTT, this is plan tomorrow today. So I do not start a work day unless I know what I'm doing. And you see a lot of entrepreneurs do this like horrible, rigorous, negative downward spiral cycle of what can I do? What should I be working on? Where do I go? Because they don't know where they're going. And so then your routine relates to nothing and you're not really getting anything done. So seven to nine hours every single day, come in here. Well, now I come in here, I used to have my whole apartment, but now I've got a door that I shut behind me, which is really nice. And I just do my focus seven to nine hours of work every single day. I plan the day ahead. And so I have two options for planning the day ahead. The first option is I use an app called Evernote, which is uh, just a good notes app. And I never have more than about five key tasks every single day. Um, and these tasks fall into four categories. So if you haven't read this book before, let me pull it up, do I have it right here? This book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Incredible read. And in this book, you know, it talks a lot about uh, really just how to move things forward in your life. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's not about productivity, it's about effectivity. Those are two completely different concepts. Productivity is just having a to-do list, scratching it all off and being done. Effectivity is, is of course, having a to-do list, scratching it off, getting it done, but knowing that those actions actually relate to an end goal that means something to you, that you desire to have, and that even the people in your life and the people around you desire to have as well. So that there's some deeper meaning and deeper threaded uh, motivation and, and desire for you to actually achieve it. And really to the point where you have no option but to achieve it. Um, so in this book, it talks about something called the four quadrants. And if you, baby, if you can make some room for Robert to put the four quadrants up on the screen. These are the four quadrants. Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. So Q1 is something called urgent and important tasks. And you're gonna see that here. Um, and urgent and important tasks are things like filing taxes. It's clients that have issues that need a refund or whatever or whatnot. It's team members that are quitting that you have to replace. It's a couch that's getting delivered that you need to, and that's what we've been doing this morning outside of the, going to the gym. It's just those little things that stack that just take your time. And they are important in the long scheme, but they're also urgent. So they take away from the unurgent but important tasks which fall into Q2. Quadrant two, these are things like working on the quality of your product, developing deeper relationships with your team, your loved ones, the people around you, building that support network into your life, putting out content like what I'm doing right now to build a deeper relationship with my audience and my network, uh, and hopefully, you know, convince more people to work with us. Um, these are things like, you know, working on a funnel, a better marketing campaign. They don't need to happen right now, but they are important. And another example is, you know, I just moved our entire business bank from one bank to another because our books keeping system just isn't up to par with, again, the plan. A part of my plan is to know my margins to a T and pay taxes quarterly automatically. And the bank that I currently work with doesn't allow me to have the sort of software integrations with the bank that I need to have in order to do that. So that's a quadrant two activity that's important, but it's not urgent. If it doesn't get done right now, nothing falls apart, 
but not doing it over time stacks and stacks into more and more debt that I have to pay off in the future. So the important tasks are things that just prevent you from having unnecessary issues in the future, as well as ensure your growth in the future. So you've got quadrant three, which is, how would that be? I think it would be unimportant and urgent. These are things like, you know, your Wi-Fi goes out, right? It's just inconveniences that just get in the way. And so you want to build a business and a life that gets rid of any unnecessary bullcrap quadrant three activities. And these are things like, like I said, Wi-Fi going out, it's things like, uh, you know, your electricity going out or things like you need to replace your laptop because it just died on you. It's things like your microphone isn't working for Zoom. You know, a lot of the equipment you use failing or it could be like, um, you know, it's just, it's just those little things that just get in the way of you having a productive work day. So you want, this is why in my office tour in the previous video, I talked pretty incessantly about just being able to get into my office and do what I have to do without distraction. And that's because quadrant three activities are soul sucking bull crap and you've got to avoid as much of those as possible. And then quadrant four activities are activities like leisure. This is not urgent, not important. So me and Lily are taking a trip to Disney at the end of the month, which is gonna be a lot of fun. Just as a reward for both of us, it's been a super stressful season. Uh, we've got a lot going on, I've got a lot going on, she's got a lot going on. And I'm just like, look, let's just forget that the world exists and go like hang out with Mickey Mouse Put for a couple Mickey days. Ears. Exactly, and just look super cute in Disney World. I've never been to Disney World. And she's so. never been to Disney World. Can you guys believe that? She's never been to Disney World. So uh, yeah, we're doing that. Um, and that's like leisure, and this is things like quarterly breaks. This is things like taking my Sundays off. So the entire idea of the Quadrant 4 activities is to make sure that you contextualize them in such a way that feeds and serves the other three quadrants. So you don't want to be on all the time. I don't work Sundays. Once my nine hour, I do not let myself work more than nine hours a day. I do not believe in 10, 11 hour, 12 hour days. I don't care how much is going on. I cut off at nine hours, but I never do less than seven. So I've got a very clear window because if I go above nine, then clearly I'm not taking care of the quadrant three, three activities, right? That's the only reason I would be going over nine. If I'm going under seven, then clearly I don't care enough about the quadrant two activities. So to start to summarize, have a clear idea of where you want to go, know which quadrant the different activities that you're serving you know, fall into and different activities that you're doing fall into, uh, and then have a simple, easy to maintain daily routine. Little things like going to bed around the same time every night. Don't stay up till 3 a.m. And I'm, you know, dude, I grew up with such bad habits in this area. I grew up in a homeschooled family that really, we lived on like California time in Indiana. So we'd stay up to like 2 or 3 a.m. every night. Like it was just the way we lived. I'd sleep until noon or one and just like live like an owl, a night owl. And so I've really learned the value of like waking up to the sun and drinking a lot of water when you first get up and taking care of your body first thing in the morning because if you don't have a good clear state of mind and a state of your body to start making good decisions for the quadrant two areas, the quadrant one areas that might stress you out if you're not on top of them, same with the quadrant three areas, then guess what? Like you are running on fumes instead of proper liquid gas. And so this is why I go to the gym at least every other day, sometimes every day. Uh, the gym for me is about two things. It's about staying healthy as well as getting rid of stress because like it or not, if you're gonna run a business, you're gonna have things that land on your plate, and by no means do I believe that you can't have a really easy and fun and peaceful lifestyle and also run a business, but I don't believe that if you're taking care of your body and running a business that you're gonna end up sane a decade from now. I think you're gonna go literally crazy. So I take care of my body for those reasons. So I get up generally around like seven to nine a.m., so I've got a pretty nice window that I can you know work within. And then I tend to start my work at about 11 a.m., about an hour before my daily team meeting. So every day I meet with my team and we go over whatever's going on. Uh, and even if there's nothing to talk about, we meet. It's a base hygiene standard for me and my team to meet together every single day. Because a lot of people that run these digital companies, they think there's like this luxury of, oh, I don't have to talk to my team members. But you miss the sense of community that comes with having an office and having a space and a shared space. So that Zoom for an hour, blocked off, it's the only thing that I do every single day, you know, and of course, sometimes I'll miss it if I'm doing something that might happen to be more important, a quadrant two activity, like maybe rebuilding the course or handling a client that's got a lot of momentum right now that will be an amazing case study for my business and I just have to go over on our call with them or whatever, but most of the time I'm on that call. Um, and yeah, then my nighttime routine is, if I'm a little wired from the work day, I'll pop some melatonin and go to bed. I wear an aura ring to track my sleep most of the time. 
typically I don't like to wear it because I tend to obsess about the numbers and then all of a sudden, you know, my sleep isn't the best. If you don't know what an aura ring is, look it up. It's a great little piece of tech that'll show you how you're sleeping. Try to get at least an hour to an hour and a half of deep and REM. Last night, I absolutely did not do that, um, but I'm still hitting the day. You know, I got a great workout in this morning. Lily came with me. I sweat my face off, did chest today, ended it with deadlifts just because I wanted to move my whole body, and now I'm here. So, really quite simple. Um, I don't know, baby, it, does, that, does that feel concise? Yeah. Yeah? I mean, let me know if there's any questions in the comments. Um, that's the whole idea is, you know, step one, know where you're going. Step two, um, create a, uh, I think the last point I'll make is make sure that your daily routine is sustainable. Uh, it, there will be seasons of you having to off balance your life. Like, obviously, you know, at coming like a month up to the wedding, you know, my work life balance is probably going to be extremely skewed towards personal life just because I'm getting married. So obviously that's going to take priority potentially for that season, depending on how that looks. I don't know. Uh, and there will be seasons where the business really needs my attention and I feel super behind. And so, you know, I'll have to sacrifice personal for a while. And this is where, you know, Lily and I have had some conversations that have been like, look, like after honeymoon season, when we get married, like I'm right back to this routine, but before my seven to nine hours and after my seven to nine hours, I'm all yours. And so I think the last key idea that I'll give you is just to be present. No matter where you're at, be extremely present. When I'm working, I'm working. When I'm with Lily, I'm with Lily. When I'm with family, I'm with family. When I'm at the gym, I'm at the gym. And it's important that you keep a clear head because the reality is there's a million little moving pieces in all these different areas of your life. And so just take a deep breath, be present where you are, and focus on exactly what needs to get done in that moment to get to where you want to get. And this is why, uh, this is why I'm a type A. Because <laughs> it's like, if I don't know where I'm going, then I feel like I'm not going anywhere. And it's easy for me to just kind of even like get depressed and feel like I'm, nothing's happening in my life. And uh, I think there's a negative motivation of I don't want to feel stagnant, as well as a positive motivation of I, I really desire the outcome that my work will create for my life um, and my clients' lives and my team's life and me and Lily's life. Um, so there you go. That's my routine. That's kind of my workflow. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's less of a routine and more of like a, I have a vision and then I hit the big things that are my priorities every day. Pretty much. Yeah, and like I I don't believe in having all these little nuance, like you gotta drink Wake your green juice. Wake up at 7 a.m. Wake up at exactly 7 a.m. You gotta drink your green juice before 7.30. Take a cold shower and Snort then you... cocaine, go to the gym. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah, I, like, I, don't, I, I don't believe in that. I think it's actually kind of weak, to be honest. I see a lot of entrepreneurs who, they have this, they have a genuine belief that if they don't do those things, they can't be effective. And like, I'm lacking on sleep right now and I'm not really all the way there uh, with my energy, but I'm still showing up. And, and I think in a perfect world, you have all these little things lined up. Like you have perfect sleep, you're hydrated, you, you ate clean the day before, all these things stack in your favor. But the reality is there are some things out of your control, out of the bubble of things that you can control, there will be some things that you can, just simply can't control. And I'm not really an advocate of trying to control every facet of your life. I don't think that's really that reasonable or realistic, but I'm, just show up. I'm an extreme advocate. Yeah, just show up, just show up. I'm an extreme advocate of controlling what you can control um, and, and, and getting obsessive about controlling it for the things that you can't control, let it go, take a deep breath, let it be chaos. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Any, any, any comments from the cameraman? Um, camera woman. Camera woman. Don't do drugs.